watching Jakarta Globe News Channel. I'm Florence Armin and this is The Perspective. Indonesia records more than 62 million active smokers. 150 million are exposed to harmful impacts, uh, effects of uh, cigarette smokes. Now, uh, and yet Indonesia remains to be the only country in Asia that has not signed the FCTC. Here to talk about that, we have uh, Matthew L. Myers, the president for Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids. Hello, Matthew. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Um, first and foremost, uh, tell, tell us your visit to Indonesia. Well, I'm here um, predominantly because when you look at the entire globe, Indonesia stands out. Mm -hmm. It's the only country in the ASEAN region mm -hmm. that not only hasn't signed the Framework Convention, it's the only country that has seen the number of cigarette smokers rise, mm -hmm. the number of cigarette sales rise, with incredibly tragic long-term consequences. Mm -hmm. Indonesia has the highest smoking rates among teenage boys of anywhere in the world today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's something that will cost the country for decades to come. Yeah. 30 uh, percent uh, child smokers starts below the age of 10. 70 percent is below the age of 19. And yet, what is stopping Indonesia from continuing uh, the discussion or the process of signing Well, SCTC? you know, the failure of Indonesia to adopt the Framework Convention is clearly a reflection of the power of the tobacco companies and the unwillingness of the Indonesian government to stand up to them. The net consequences is we see the kind of advertising that attracts children here that has been stopped all across the rest of the globe. Unless Indonesia takes strong action to put a halt to that, we'll continue to see Indonesia's children become addicted to tobacco and die from tobacco-related diseases. Mm -hmm. And Indonesia remains to be the only country in Southeast Asia that allows advertisement and sponsorship from cigarette companies. It is absolutely the only country where you can go and see sponsorship of events that attract children. Literally every other country has long ago stopped doing it. Indeed, what's interesting to me is that companies like Philip Morris International has promised around the rest of the world that they won't engage in that behavior, mm -hmm. yet they do here, mm -hmm. knowing it's an effect on kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, as, as, an old, and as an outsider, but at the same time as, as a very active activist on, on this, where do you see Indonesia uh, stand on this? And, 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 and how can uh, legislators, how can uh, uh, stakeholders, members of the public push the government to, to, to sign or at least adopt FCTC as a first step mm -hmm. to show that it's, it's, its intent in trying to um, uh, improve the health of, of its citizens? Well, you know, there are fewer actions that have a greater impact on the health of the citizens and on the health of children than in curtailing tobacco marketing, raising the price of cigarettes so that they're too expensive for young people. Um, and until Indonesia's legislators and government sees the long-term impact of its failure to act, this will remain the tobacco industry's playground. Indeed, you know, executives from BAT and Philip Morris often talk when they're speaking to people around the rest of the globe that they see Asia as their growth market, even as they see the rest of the globe beginning to curtail its action. Mm -hmm. The one difference is Asia really is no longer its growth market. It's Indonesia. Mm -hmm. We have saw cigarette smoking go down in countries throughout Asia, from Indi India to Sri Lanka um, to the Philippines, yet Indonesia stands out, and it stands out because it's the one country that hasn't banned tobacco advertising mm -hmm. that continues to allow what are the, is now the multinational tobacco companies to have their way. Mm. It's also unique, it's, it's, it's ironic because Indonesia was one of the four countries that initiates the FCTC. Well, that's the and great, the, uh, it's yeah. a great irony. I yeah. participated in the early discussions of yeah. the FCTC. Indonesia was an active participant. It had right. a great deal to do with what is in the Framework Convention. Right. Yet its failure to ratify it means that it has no longer any say about how it's being implemented here Correct. or around the rest of the world. But how is it the legislative, the government fails to see the, the long-term impact of, of this decision on its younger generation? You know, it, it's an unfortunate commentary that too often legislators are willing to take the tobacco industry's money and do their bidding in the hopes that the public doesn't realize the consequences. And yet, the tobacco use among Indonesia's children um, means that you're going to suffer from long-term lung cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and other diseases unlike any other country in the globe. And what it's going to do is it's going to swamp your health care system yeah. Yeah. Um, in, in the long run. The issue really is one was 
will the public hold those legislators accountable? Mm -hmm. Because every day they fail to act, more children become addicted. Yeah, because there's no, never short of information and effort out there, private, pri done by private sectors to, mm -hmm. to present the evidence how hazardous is uh, cigarette smoke. In 2010, 200,000 deaths that year. So that means 558 more or less every single day from That's exactly smoke. right. You know, this is one of those cases where if Indonesia's legislature does nothing, 225,000 Indonesians will continue to die each and every year, and that number will only grow. Um, the tobacco companies will get wealthy. The money will be shipped out of Indonesia to the multinational headquarters in Switzerland, in London, in places like that. And Indonesia's children will continue to suffer. But what we've seen is it won't change unless the public speaks up. Mm -hmm. The numbers themselves have not motivated those officials. Mm -hmm. There's reason for optimism. Your president um, and your minister of health have both spoken about the importance of You're beginning to tackle this presidency. problem. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, have both spoken about the importance of tackling the problem. They recognize the impact on your children. But until people are willing to expend political capital, tobacco companies will win, your kids will lose. Mm -hmm. There's, there's got to be, uh, no doubt, political will from the government. Um, we take uh, gov Governor of Jakarta, uh, Basuki, for instance. He's mm -hmm. banned all public places as a smoke-free zone. I mean, it's, it starts right there. But I think it, 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 it's just up to district heads and, and like you said, uh, legislators to take that bold step and, you know what, this is what we're going to do. Well, we have seen the tobacco industry boldly advertised, literally right outside the front door of elementary schools. Sporting events, which I think sporting, is sporting the greatest events, irony. Music events. Mm -hmm. um, the kind of things that the same companies have pledged not to do in country after country, and yet they obviously don't think the health of Indonesia's children are worth the same as the health of America's children or Europe's children. Until they're held accountable for that, they'll keep doing it. That's what they've told us. The critical question is, will Indonesia's leaders have the political will to stand up to the Philip Morris and BAT and take the kind of action we know that can make a difference? We saw last year cigarette smoking rates dropped by over 8% mm -hmm. um, in India. Um, they dropped by over 15% in the Philippines when, in, when the Philippines raised its tobacco tax. At the same exact time, cigarette smoking increased each and every year for the last five years here. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Matthew, we'll continue this conversation after this short break. We'll be right back.